Great. So let's take a look at the results of the poll now. All right. So it looks like 85% of you seem to understand what a blog is. A blog is really just a web space. Blogs cover as many different topics and express many opinions. And a lot of you captured another part of the definition of blog. A typical blog combines text, images, links to other blogs, web pages, the ability of readers to leave comments in an interactive format is also an important part of many blogs. So let's just take a look now at what a blog is. So a blog is a web space. Blogs cover many different topics. They express many different opinions. Blogs allow users to reflect, share opinions, and discuss various topics in the form of an online journal, while readers may comment on posts. Some blogs are highly influential, for example, the New York Times blog. Some have enormous readership. Some are university course websites, and some are just individual blogs. People write blogs to describe their work, their hobbies, their social, political issues, or news and current events. I actually created a blog to share information about my wedding. So many different uses these days for a blog. Now let's look at what is a UBC blog. So UBC blog is a customized blog platform that was developed for the UBC blog community. UBC blog is powered by the WordPress multi-user platform. This is an open source platform that is used to develop web spaces and blogs worldwide. UBC blog, importantly, is a supported tool and resources and training is available for the UBC community. But what place does it have in teaching and learning? There are many, many different uses for UBC blogs in teaching and learning. Some of the uses that we've experienced in our job as learning technologists, uh, UBC blogs can be used as a course website, a resource web space, they can be used to share photos, they can be used as a study group blog for students, they can be used as a community of practice web space, or as an e-portfolio. I'd just like to open it to the group now. What other ways do you think UBC blogs can be used in teaching and learning? Let's just give it a minute or so and please type your response into the text area and let's see what everyone thinks. Great, informal student discussion aids areas, problem-based learning. Give that another 30 seconds, see if any more answers pop up. Wiki pages are a little bit different than blogs. Um, in the wiki session, you can start to think about how a wiki page might differ from a blog, but actually wiki pages can be embedded on blogs something we're not going to cover in this workshop in this workshop. So there is a way to integrate the two. Good point, Carl. And the wiki session will be next Monday at the same time. Great, good answers about blogs. Now let's move on and take a look at a couple of example sites. So I'm going to push these sites out to you. And remember, once I push them out to you, you can navigate around the site but my screen is going to remain static. So I'm just going to direct you to move around the site and take a look at a couple different things. First of all, we're going to look at an example of a professional sample site. This is used by a dental hygiene clinic in Calgary, and they've developed it using the WordPress platform. So let's just take a look. Great, and that should pop open onto your screen, Lifetime Smile Dental Hygiene. And I just want you to notice a couple things about the site. First of all, 
Note the three pages under the blog title. Poem about the blog, the clinic. These pages contain static information, like contact information about the clinic. Often when using UBC blogs, you will see often pages are used to display this static content. Now click on the site's home page, which is the link to the left of about the blog, and the site's posts will appear. You may have to scroll down a little bit to see that. And if you scroll down the post roll, you'll see a number of different posts. Posts are used to display information and news about the clinic and dental hygiene in general. Notice how the posts typically display more dynamic, changeable information. Now let's take another a look at a different site once we've looked around there. And this site is a UBC blog site again using the WordPress platform that's been used to develop a course, ETEC 521, in the Masters of Educational Technology program. So I'm gonna push that out to you now. Great, now that you all see that, um, notice the post located in the center column of the blog. Scroll down that column a little bit. The first post is called Video Conferencing for Indigenous Schools. Scroll down that column, and again, take a look at how the instructor and students have contributed information to the web space using these posts. Also, notice under authors on the left-hand sidebar, how different, the different people participating in this blog have been linked as authors. And if I click on one of those names, you can click on one now if you would like, it's going to compile all the work created by that author. Scroll down the page you're on now and also notice the keywords or tags that are used for this site. These are on the right-hand sidebar under keywords. The tags are one type of indexing system. Another type of indexing system is categories, which we're going to look at a little bit more today. So I think we've looked at what a blog is. We've looked at a couple of examples. Now we can, I'm going to share out the application in a couple minutes, and I'm going to walk you through the basic setup for a blog, how to create a post, how to create a page, how to change the overall look and feel. So give us about one minute to make this transition, and then I'm going to push out the application shared to you. Great, now I've shared out the application to you. And uh, keep in mind with this sharing, when I move around on the screen, when I change screens, there's gonna be some buffering on your end. And sometimes this can make it a little hard to see. So just be patient. I'm gonna try to take it slowly so that you'll be able to follow. 
So does, if everyone sees the tech buffet site, can you please give a check, put a check mark now in the participants area? Great, we got one coming. All right, we can begin now. It looks like everyone can see the screen. So what you see now is the presentation view of a UBC blog. And what I mean by the presentation view is this is the view that is published on the web. So this is the website view. In a couple of minutes, we're going to look at the dashboard view. But let's just take a look at the overall components of the presentation view. First of all, Note the general setup of the site. You'll see a header bar where it says Tech Buffet. And when we create a uh, site, often we can customize this header bar. Also notice on the right-hand side, the sidebar. Again, this is an area that we can customize when building the site. And the sidebar contains links that allow us to search the site, as well as a number of different functions, for example, images, or text can be put into the sidebar. Also notice in the central column, the Hello World post. This is one post. It's actually a default post for the site. And this is going to be one way that we can add content to our site. Now that you've seen the presentation view, we're going to move into the back end of the blog and take a look at the blog dashboard. This might take a couple minutes in terms of buffering, so I'm just going to move to the dashboard now. To do this, I'm going to scroll up to my blog at the very top of the screen, and a list of all my blogs is going to open up. I'm going to scroll down this list, and I'll try to do it slowly so your computer isn't too confused by buffering. And I'm going to go hover over the Tech Buffet practice blog that I created. From there, a menu is going to open up that allows me to scroll over, and I'm going to click on Dashboard. And that is going to pop open our dashboard. Now let's take a tour of the dashboard a little bit. The dashboard is the nerve center of the blog. It's the back end of the blog. Um, this is where you're going to make changes, change your settings, changing your posts. You'll add content. And when you've done that, you'll publish it to the presentation view that we saw before. Let's just look at the overall layout of the dashboard now. You'll notice these boxes in the dashboard. I'm just going to circle around one now. Each of these boxes is also called a channel. And in a dashboard, we can move these channels around to customize it. Channels display things like information about what's going on in your blog right now. They also allow you to link to other external sites. Let's look at the Right Now channel, because this is probably the most important for your purposes. The Right Now channel gives you a snapshot of your web space. If you look at my Right Now channel, you'll notice right now I only have one post, one page, one category. As, as I add, continue to add to my blog, these numbers are going to increase. I won't do it now, but if I clicked on one of these links, it would automatically take me to that section of the blog. So in a way, it's a shortcut area. The most important area on your dashboard, though, is the sidebar on the left side of your screen. The sidebar, I'm just going to move my cursor over to it now, contains links to a number of areas of your blogs. From the sidebar, we can add posts. We can create pages. We can change our settings and we can change the overall functionality of our blog. As we walk through some functions today, uh, you're going to get a chance to see how it looks to click on the sidebar, 
how we use the sidebar to access different parts of our site. So before we move on about the dashboard, are there any questions that have come up to you in terms of WordPress overall or the dashboard? Let's just take two minutes. And if you have questions now, please submit them in the chat area. That's a really good question. Um, Rebecca asked, do the posts have to be made by the blog users and then comments by viewers? Actually, um, WordPress is quite versatile in this respect. If you add users to your blog, they will be able to contribute posts. Viewers are always able to comment. So again, the posts might be done by the author or the author can add particular users who can contribute to the blog. For example, in a course blog I'm working with right now, all of the students are added as users so that throughout the term they can contribute posts to the overall blog. If there aren't any more questions, I'm going to move on and we are going to create our first post. To do this, I'm going to begin by going to the sidebar on the left of the screen and clicking on the post link. Great. So from there, you'll see the post menu is going to pop up. In the center of the post menu, you'll notice the title, Hello World. This is the default post that's included on the site. This list under Hello World, as I develop my blog, all of the different posts I've created are going to show up in this section. From here, I can edit the post, I can delete a post, I can change the title of a post. But what I would like to do before I do that is to create a new post. And to do that, I'm going to scroll up to the Add New button right next to the post title. And I'm going to click on that button to open up my Add Post screen. Let's just, I'll give you a quick overview of the the post editing screen here. You'll notice where I'm circling my cursor here, this is where we can title the post. And if I scroll a little bit lower to the content box, this is where I'm going to add my content, I'm going to upload my media into my post, and I'm going to do my formatting. Also notice on the side box here on the right side of the screen, this is where we're going to delete our post, save our post, preview our post, or publish our post. So let's make a practice post now. I'm going to begin by titling the post. And I've titled the post, Our Reflection. One thing to keep in mind with the title bar is you can't format that titling, so you won't be able to change the size of that. Now that I've added a title, I'm going to add some content into my content area. Great, so I've added a little bit of content and now what I can do is I can format the content using the menu that I'm circling right now. If you're familiar with Microsoft Word or other word processing systems, this menu, this WYSIWYG editor, is going to be quite similar to that. 
So right now, I'm going to add a couple numbers to my post, add some bullets to my post, as well as make part of the content bold. So I've, had, I've done a little bit of formatting on the post. Um, one thing to keep in mind with the formatting is in order to view the entire formatting screen, you're going to have to click up on the kitchen sink, which I'm scrolling over right now, and that is going to open up the formatting option. Now that I've formatted the post, and I've added a little bit of content, and I've added a title, I'm going to add a category to my post. Now, a category. A category is an indexing system that you're going to be, that often is used with blogs. The purpose of categories is by adding a category to a blog, when someone clicks on that category in the front end of the site, it is going to compile all the information under the category. So this is one way we have of indexing our site. So right now, I'm going to scroll down the screen, and on the right side, under Categories, I'm going to add a new category. Great. So now I'm just going to click on the link Add a New Category. And the box is going to open, which allows me to create any category I would like. So I'm going to call this category Reflection. And I'm going to use this category to add any information that I have about Reflection. In order to add the new category, I'm just going to click now on Add New Category. Now you'll notice the category reflection appeared, which means I've now categorized this post to the category reflection. So we've added a title, we've added content, we've formatted the content, and we've added a category. Our next step is to publish our site, our post to our presentation view. So to do this, I'm going to begin by scrolling up to the top right-hand side of the screen. Great. And now you'll see you have a couple options in terms of publishing your post. You can save the draft, and by saving the draft, that means that the post will be saved in the back end of your post, but nobody who comes to your URL can see the draft. I can also preview the post, which I'm not going to do right now, but this gives us a way to see the post before we send it to publication. Finally, by clicking on the blue Publish button, I can publish the post to the presentation view, which I'm going to do now. Now the yellow bar that appears under Edit Post shows me that I have successfully published this post. Now what I'd like to do is go take a look at the presentation view to see the post that I've just created. So to do this, I'm going to scroll to the left-hand side of the screen, to the title of the blog, Tech Buffet, and I'm going to click on this to open the presentation view. Great, and now our presentation view has popped up, and you'll notice the original default post, <coughs> Hello World, is at the top, and just below that is the post I just created called Reflection. I'm just going to scroll down now and show you that post. Great. Now, 
If you look on the right-hand sidebar under Category, you'll notice under the Category Reflection, there is now one post. So I've successfully linked the post reflection to the Category Reflection. If a viewer came to my site and clicked on Reflection, it would automatically compile everything that I've indexed under this category. Great. Let's take two minutes again. And please type any questions you have about posts into the chat box. All right, it looks like we don't have any questions so far. Sorry, we need a can we oh. post the pending date order? A question just popped in. Uh, can Denise asked, can they be posted in ascending descending date order? That's a good question. Typically posts are added in reverse chronological order. However, if you would like to change them to descending order, you can actually change the date of the post which allows the order to change. There may be another solution to this. This is the one that I typically use. I hope that answers your question, Denise. Now, we're going to move back to the presentation view in a second, and we're going to create a couple pages. Sorry, create a page. So to go back to the presentation view, I'm going to scroll up to the top of my screen to my blog again. And that drop-down menu showing all my blogs is going to appear. From there, I'm going to scroll down the drop-down menu to Tech Buffet again. And I'm going to scroll over to Dashboard. Great, and there's our dashboard again. On the Right Now screen, notice under Content now that we're reading two posts rather than one. Now, let's create a page. And in order to create a page, I'm going to scroll over to my sidebar on the left-hand side of the screen again. And under Pages, which is already, I'm just going to click on Pages and open it. And then I'm going to scroll under Pages, and I'm going to click on the Add New Link. This is going to pop open an Add New Page form. You'll notice that this form is almost identical to the Add Posting form. Pages as mentioned previously, are often used to add static information to our site. Pages don't use categories, and they can't use tags. Pages are a little bit like typical web pages. So what I'm going to do now with my page is I'm going to add a title to the page, and then I'm going to write a little bit of content, and then I'll show you a couple privacy options around pages. Great. So you'll notice that I've added some contact information to the site. I've added the title contact. I've added my name, as well as a phone number and an address for contact. If I want to publish this page now, I have a couple options I can go through. 
And <clears throat> if I take a look here in the publish box on the right hand of the screen, under visibility, you'll notice that the visibility is set to public. One interesting option with the UBC Blogs WordPress platform is the ability to publish private posts. This is in addition to site-wide privacy settings we're going to look at towards the end of the setting. Right now I'm going to imagine that I would like this contact information on my site, but I need a way to set it so that only people who I would like to view it can. The public will not see this. In order to do this, I'm going to click on the blue link, Edit, just beside Public. That's going to pop open a couple options in terms of privacy. You'll notice right now the, the post is set to Public. If I wanted to change that to a private post that only can be viewed when entering a password, I would just click on Password Protected, I would enter a password, and then I would click OK. I'm not going to walk you through that right now, but it is important to know that you have the ability to password protect individual posts. One issue, one area that people use this for often is if they're putting a CV or a resume online where they would not like the public to be able to view it. This, this password protection can also be done at the post level, as Emily just brought up. So I'm going to keep this page public now, and what I'm going to do in a second is click on the blue Publish button right here, and we're going to take a, take a look at the presentation view. Great. The page is now published. And again, the yellow bar appearing will confirm that it has been published. Let's go to our presentation view now and take a look at the page that I just created. To do this, I'm going to scroll to the left-hand side, and I'm going to click on the title of the site, Tech Buffet. Great, and there is our presentation view now. And you'll notice under Pages, there's an About page, which again is a default page. And just under that is the page that I just created called Content. In one second, I'm going to click on that, and we can see what the page looks like. Great, and now you should have the contact page that was created pop up under your screen. I'm just going to scroll down that page for a sec and note the comment box at the bottom. One feature of WordPress is that viewers of WordPress can comment on any page, any post for the site. I won't be walking you through this today but it's quite easy to disable con comments on either posts or pages if you desire them. So we've created a post, we've created a page, and now I want to look at two other things quickly. One is changing the overall look and feel of our site using themes, and the other is to briefly talk about privacy options. Let's start again. Let's, uh, I'll give you another two minutes to ask any questions that have come up to the group in the chat box. Looks like no questions yet. So let's move on and take a look at themes now. And to do that, I'm going to scroll back up to my, the My Blogs menu. And again, I'm going to scroll down the menu 
and go to the dashboard. Great, so now the dashboard view should have loaded onto your screen. And what we're gonna do now is to change the theme. If you noticed in the presentation view, we're using quite a plain default theme. An interesting part of WordPress is their use of themes or templates. These powerful templates will change the overall look and functionality of the site without affecting the content. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to scroll to the left and I'm going to click on the appearance button in the sidebar. When I click on the appearance button, that is automatically going to open up all the themes available on the site. I'm just going to scroll down that list now so you can take a look at some of the 31 WordPress themes that UPC has added to the blog. You'll note the themes are quite different. Some of them have single columns, some of them have multiple columns. Some of them have a customizable header area, some of them do not. Um, so a number of different, uh, different functionalities in the theme. So what I'm going to do now is I like the Coraline theme, and I'm just going to click on that theme to open up a preview of it. Great, now a preview screen should have opened for you, which shows what the site will look like when you change the theme. Sometimes when I do workshops, people get stuck on this theme and they wonder why their blog isn't functioning correctly. But remember, from this preview screen, in order to actually add the new template, we need to click on Activate in the upper right-hand corner. So right now, I'm going to click on Activate Coraline, and we can take a look at the new theme that we've added. Great. Again, notice the yellow bar that appears that confirms that we have successfully added the theme. What we'll do now is we're going to go back to our presentation view and take a look at how different the site looks like with our new theme. And to do this, I'm going to click on the Tech Buffet title in the left-hand corner of the site. Um, I just received a question about widgets. I will talk about that in a couple minutes as soon as we're finished looking at the theme. So if you take a look at the presentation view, you'll notice some of the changes that occurred with this theme. Notice the different header image that appeared right here. And I won't be able to walk you through this today, but these header images can be changed <coughs> in order to customize the site. Also notice the page tabs above next to home. Now, in addition to having the pages listed on the sidebar, there are links to the pages just above the header image. If I click on one of those tabs, it will open up all of the pages. So again, before we move on, and actually let's just take a look at widgets really quickly now. In order to take a look at widgets, I'm going to go back to the dashboard view again. Yeah, actually, a good point about widgets that Emily just brought up that I'd like to remind you of before we take a look more at the back end of widgets is where widgets appear on your presentation view. 
So right now, if you look where it says on the right-hand side of your screen, on the sidebar, where it says search it, I'm circling it right now. This is an example of a search widget. Below that, recent entries is an example of a recent entry widget. If I scroll further down, you'll see a links widget. So again, a number of different widgets that we can customize to your sidebar. Let's quickly take a look at the back end of widgets, and then we're going to move on and talk about privacy. To do this, I'm going to follow the same procedure to go to the dashboard. Now we're back on our dashboard, and once again, I'm going to go to the left-hand side of the screen to the sidebar, and I'm going to click on Appearance. When I click on Appearance, a menu is going to appear below Theme that says Widgets, Menus, Theme, Option, Background, and Header. Let's take a look at Widgets now. To do that, I'm going to click on the widget link just below themes. Great, and you should see our widget menu now. You'll notice right now, under the primary widget area, which is a representation of the sidebar, it's actually empty. However, when we looked in the presentation view, you probably noticed some widgets. The reason for this is sites automatically use default widgets. As soon as you add a widget to that, the default widgets will be removed. To add a widget to your sidebar, all you're going to need to do is to click on the widget in the center of the screen and drag it over to the desired sidebar box. I'm going to do that now with category widgets and a calendar widget. You'll note I have a couple options with the category widget. I'm not going to do anything with these now. I'm just going to click Save. Again, I have similar options with the calendar widget. I can give it a title. I'm just going to choose to go with the default title calendar, and I'm going to click on the blue Save button. Great, so now I've added a couple widgets to the sidebar. Let's go back to the presentation view one last time and take a look at the widgets that I've added. Great, so you should see the presentation view on your screen and you should notice the calendar widget at the top that I've just added. And when I scroll down, you're going to see the category widget. Great, you should now see the category widget and notice the category that we added previously, reflection. The final point I'd like to make before we stop the application share and take a look at some resources related to uh, UBC Blog is the privacy setting. I'm not going to actually walk you through the specific privacy setting, but it is important to understand that WordPress UBC Blogs is quite versatile in terms of privacy. I have a couple choices in terms of how public I want to make my site. I can have the site completely public so that anybody who goes online can search the site and we'll be able to find it and view it. I can also make the site so that it's only available to the UBC community. That means that only people who have logged in with the CWL will be able to locate the site. In addition, one privacy setting that a number of course instructors I've been working with have used 
is they have set the site to be completely private except to those students added as users. Again, for a specific example with an instructor I'm working with, they would like their blog to be used in the course, but they don't want their blog to be viewed by the UBC community. So they've added all their students as users to their site, and all of those students can see and contribute to the site, but otherwise the site is completely invisible on the web. Let's take another two minutes and have any questions you have about the back end or the front end of WordPress. And then we're going to move on, look at some key points and resources. All right, so that ends the application share, and uh, we don't have any questions popping up, but please feel free to contribute questions as we move on. Just some key points, some summary points about WordPress and UBC blogs. So first of all, content can be displayed using pages, which typically display static information, and posts, which typically display dynamic information. Within this, um, some blogs are created on, almost only using posts, whereas other blogs are created almost only using pages. So any balance of these two ways of adding content can be used. Secondly, posts can be indexed using categories. Another way they can be indexed is using tags, which is something we're not going to get into today. But there are a couple of ways to index our posts to make navigating it easier. Thirdly, Themes can change the appearance and functionality of the entire web space without changing the content. Finally, there are a variety of privacy levels on UBC blog. So where to go from here? In order to continue, maybe develop a UBC blog for your course or a personal blog, for a student blog, what we can do now is access a number of UBC resources related to blogs. As I mentioned, UBC Blogs is a supported tool, which means there are a variety of training resources available for faculty, staff, and students. So right now, I'm going to open up the e-learning toolkit, which is a great source of information for UBC Blogs. should have the WordPress blog screen open for you now from the e-learning toolkit. And again, I can't control your screen, but in order to look around this site, take a look at the different tabs. Um, and each of these tabs has information relevant to designing a blog. So click on uses and benefits, for example, getting started resources and tips, and just spend about a minute kind of getting a feel for the information offered on this site. And while you're doing this, feel free to send any questions that come up through the chat window. Great, hopefully you've had a chance to look through there. Also note that on the top header menu, under Toolkit, if you scroll over that, a number of different UBC supported tools and web-based tools will appear, including at the bottom of the list, Wimba Classroom, which is a resource covering what we looked at yesterday for Live Classroom. Let's take a look at 
UBC blog support now because this is another area that might assist you in your development of a web space. You should see a UBC blog support menu appear now, a page appear, and you'll notice that there are frequently asked questions you can look through, as well probably most importantly is a support ticketing system, weblog support at exchange.ubc.ca. If you're stuck, if you're having a challenge developing your course blog, send an email to the support and they will get back to you with answers. We will be sending you resources after these sessions are over, which you can use to access these website URLs. So we're almost done our session now, and I just have one more slide before we get some feedback, and that is how to get started using UBC Blogs. So if you're interested in developing a web space, a blog space, a course site, begin by going to http blogs.ubc.ca and log in with your CWL. This will prompt you to create a blog. From there, there are several different ways you can work, use WordPress or UBC blogs for your course. Send an email to weblog support, identify yourself as an instructor, and they will send you some information on options in terms of developing a course blog. Finally, Check out some of the training offered by CTLT around using blogs. Typically, we offer two to three different WordPress training sessions per semester, guiding users through basic blogging, through more advanced web space building. So we're almost done. We have about five minutes, and I'd like to just take two minutes and answer any questions that have come up to you throughout this session. Again, you can enter the questions in the chat box. I just had a question um, from Penny. If someone's not from UBC, how could they get started? That's a really good question. Um, to use a UBC blog, you do we do require a CWL. However, if you're not from the UBC blog community, it is possible to obtain a temporary CWL that can be used. In addition, the WordPress blog platform, which has been used by UBC, has all, is also been in, has also been installed on a number of different servers. One of the most famous one is WordPress.com. By you can also activate account account using WordPress.com and develop your blog onto there. And just an aside there, information can be exported quite easily from UBC Blogs to WordPress.com or from WordPress.com to UBC Blogs. Great, it looks like that's it for questions. So I'd like to thank everyone for attending this session. And please take a moment and complete the feedback survey that I'm going to push out to you now. And just a reminder, we'll see everyone next Monday, December 13th, for a UBC Wiki session. Same time, same place.